Good morning and thank you for joining us. It's nine o'clock, it's Saturday morning and it's... Sunrise! Exactly. On a musical note, I'm Neil Taigbe and that is Alero. Just in case you forgot. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 we did, Alero. What, what do you mean, just in case you forget? Is there a chance that anybody could forget your name? Well, some, some people have seen me and said to me, well, we don't really hear when you say your name. Oh. So, okay, my name is Alero Edu. Okay, so my name is Neota Egbe. Egbe. <laughs> that, that makes it better. Yes. <laughs> So, I mean, nobody can say they didn't hear today. Yeah, but even, even, even if you don't hear the name being said, I, I think they usually put the name on, on the screen. On the screen. So, well, well. So you can learn the book. No, 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 no. Well, they're paying attention to what is being said, not watching oh. what is on the screen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's true. But talking about what's on the screen, this week was a, a little bit... Um, Beautiful. You know why? Mm -hmm. The, the, the rains. Ah, you do read minds now, don't the you? The rains. Oh my ah. God, it was so beautiful. It was soothing. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, soothing. Lord. And it was looking like it was going to drizzle again this morning. Mm. And I was praying, oh Lord, let it come down, let it come down, you know. No, no. The people still have things to do. And a lot of people are celebrating women. They're celebrating are you saying women. that be know, because it rains, you can't on, do the things on, you want to do? Hold, Don't you eat when it hold rains? Hold your horses. Hold on. Okay. It's uh, Women's Day. We're celebrating Tomorrow. Women. So the entire week is all about you guys. Thank you. So allow us to celebrate I take you. a bow on if behalf rain, of women all over the world. If the rains come down, we won't have time enough to celebrate you. There are all okay. manner of women meetings all over. There's uh, leaders, ladies breaking boundaries happening in uh, on Adela Deco, I think. There are all manner of meetings to celebrate women. I mean, my, my head is about to burst. But it's true. You guys deserve to be celebrated. Thank you, you very awesome much. Things. Thank you. Our producer, you. Uh, uh, Uncle Hanim, she does awesome things. She's talking to me right now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, oh it's, it's good to be appreciated. Just, it's nice that the men I, actually appreciate us on the things just, that we are doing. Can I just beg you to please intercede on my behalf? I'm being threatened. <laughs> Well, hey, well, you all know. week all we heard about was coronavirus. coronavirus no, 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 but we need to leave that, leave that for a moment and oh. celebrate the women in our lives, our mothers, our sisters, our daughters. You guys are awesome. I mean, we may not say it all the time, but the truth is sometimes I ask the question, what would it be like you? I mean, we're all men on this earth. Oh, I saw a video. Some lady went and spoke to somebody, some high-flying woman who runs a corporation. And uh, she said she wasn't in a, it wasn't a, one of her best days. And she just cried and cried and cried. And then at the end of the meeting, she just adjusted her jacket, stood up and went and faced business. Business goes on. Let's forget about all that, you know. Wow. Says, can a man ever do that? Yeah, we will tell you that we can. Uh, but the truth is, you guys spice up our lives a great deal. And we, you need to be celebrated. You carry so much weight, so much pressure is on the women out there in every area. I mean, nobody ever tells a man who comes out in his um, undershirt and short, why are you dressed like that? We hardly do talk to men who are sagging their pants. <gasps> we hardly, uh, no, we, we, no, do not, no. we do not ask men, why are you not married yet? We don't put pressure on the men for so many things. But hey, we put we other kinds of pressure. We don't spare the women. We don't. Why are you talking that way? Why are you sitting why that you way? Why are you sitting that way? Why are yes. you dressed that way? Yes. Why can't you be like your mother? Why can't you be like that woman? Why can't you? And there's no end to it. Well, it's okay. You're fantastic people. Thank you. High five for you. High five. Well done. And now our menu for today. Hmm. So we are going to start out with a look at... Um, Electoral hmm. reforms. Okay. That's very apt. <laughs> yeah. Because of the... Uh, Anik, a lot of things are happening. People are already talking 2023. Anik actually had a, a retreat and we'll talk about that. Okay. Uh, we're going to be chatting with the Minister for State for Health. I mean, that's very apt as well. Mm. You know, Lassa fever, coronavirus, mm. Sensavious virus. We need to be healthy. You know, somehow. all the viruses. Then as expected, <laughs> the International Women's Day is tomorrow. But we will talk about it a bit. And then we have social studies. What is the difference between equity and equality? Mm. 
happens. Special Seems focus, kind of obvious. Special focus. It's not that obvious on women in nation building. So mm. you need to listen to that lecture today. Okay. Then we'll go on to look at you and living. And today it's about communication. How many marriages have broken down because there was no communication it's between? Just... Yeah, that's one. Mm. Then, of course, parents and children. I mean, anybody you're interacting with, you should be able to communicate. Ah. Yes. And then the artist of the week. Today is a, full, is a fuller package than it was. It's usually a full package, but today is especially fuller. Well, we have to squeeze all of that in within the three odd hours that we have. So On this first like Saturday to... in March. I to encourage you to make yourself comfortable. Cup of tea, cup of coffee, water. Just be comfortable. But our Twitter handles will be on the screen. Be a part of the conversation. Let's have fun and learn today. Back in a moment to stay with us. Welcome back. Now let's start the show in earnest and we're going to focus on electoral reforms. A few weeks ago, members of some civil society organizations in Abuja um, came together and organized a protest and asked the National Assembly to prioritize electoral reforms in order to avoid the situation with the 2019 elections where a number of elections were overturned by the judiciary. <clears throat> and also recently, INEC had their own retreats, mm -hmm. both internal and external, to say. look at electoral reforms. So what exactly is wrong with our electoral act that we're needing? So we've, there, a few amendments have been made, but more are being looked at in light of what is going on in our nation today. Well, we have the National Commissioner and Chairman of Information and Voter Education Committee at the INEC, Mr. Festos Okoye, with us this morning. Good morning. Thank you. And thank you for joining us. Very well. Now, let us begin by looking at what you all talked about at this retreat that you let's, spoke about. Let us begin by beginning. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 what we did ex was um, we had a review of the 2019 elections, um, both at the state level and at the national level, uh, involving um, the critical stakeholders in the electoral process. And we have vested uh, some of the issues arising from the 2019 elections. Um, and then uh, we also had a review uh, with our resident electoral commissioners and our directors and other critical stakeholders. Uh, so we documented some of these reviews and um, my, you know, uh, looked at them side by side with the Electoral Act and the constitutional provisions. And uh, it was our decision that based on some of the litigations arising from the elections, uh, based on some of the decisions of our superior courts of record, that there's the need for us to take a second look at the uh, legal framework for the conduct of elections, um, uh, make some adjustments, mm -hmm. uh, plug some loopholes and some, some lacuna uh, that we noticed, mm -hmm. and then uh, also synergize um, and brainstorm with the members of the National Assembly uh, relating to some of those issues. And that's exactly what we have done in the last one week. Mm. Mm. How much can INEC influence any electoral reforms? We are, we are electoral managers. We are the ones who implement some of these laws. Uh, so what we have done was to look at some of the laws um, against the practical realities um, mm -hmm. uh, out there in the field. Mm -hmm. And we have suggested what I call far-reaching uh, amendments to the law. And we have also made new proposals that we believe will assist um, the voters have their votes count. And that's exactly where we are now. Well, the, some of the breaches in the electoral processes so far as, as they stand, yes. um, INEC has been accused of being behind the breaches itself. In other words, some of your INEC staff are not even informed or, how do you put it now, competent enough to run the process. So is that, was that also part of what you looked at? Well, I, I don't believe that any, electro, any serious electoral management body we deliberately breach its own rules and its own regulations and undermine an election that it has been constitutionally and um, legally mandated to conduct. But that does not mean uh, that in the process of running an election, um, you won't have uh, challenges. The conduct of elections, for instance, the 2019 elections, 
can be said to be the biggest national event um, in, in, that particular, in that particular year. Uh, because we deployed over a million ad hoc staff mm -hmm. for the conduct of that particular election. And you cannot deploy uh, over a million ad hoc staff without having a few challenges here and there. And you know that these ad hoc staff are Nigerians. These are students of federal tertiary institutions. These are serving youth core members. Uh, these are senior lecturers and professors from uh, different institutions of um, uh, higher learning in Nigeria. And so we deploy them, we train them. Some people you train them and still they, you have challenges when they get out there in the field. But I, but I, I believe that uh, in terms of training, the commission has been doing very, very well uh, because we have a training manual. We have uh, master trainers who um, assist in training some of these, um, uh, these, these officials. But there are also other challenges out there in the field uh, that has nothing to do with the competence or capacity or intellectual uh, power of the commission that also have very serious impact on the conduct of elections. Okay, let's look about these challenges that INEC seem to have, yes. um, both intrinsic and the external yes. um, challenges. So let's break it down. Yes. Because one of the things they will say is that if you want to, you, you do a self-examination, yes. see where you have internal issues and then the external issues. So let's see, what are the internal issues that INEC had? Because we do know, I mean, the, some INEC officials are convicted of bribing to Yes. to uh, undermine the 2015 election. Oh, and right. then there are some other infractions that yes. some staff within, and some of them have been reprimanded internally as well. Yes. So let's look at what are the internal challenges that INEC had to deal with, and then the external ones that INEC had to deal with. Well, uh, we, you see, some of the <clears throat> internal challenges uh, uh, um, are impacted by external challenges. For, 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 for instance, uh, when we want to deploy uh, for, for an election, you have to, first, uh, you have to print ballot papers. Uh, sometimes you want to print ballot papers, some of the candidates we go to court um, to challenge whether a particular political party's logo should be on the ballot. That presupposes that you have to wait until that particular litigation uh, is, um, is, is, conc is concluded. concluded. Furthermore, <laughs> because of the trust deficit in our electoral process, most of our ballot papers are printed outside the country because we impute security features in, the, in these ballot papers, and sometimes we customize them to each local government to prevent a situation where somebody will just go to a roadside printer and print our ballot papers, print our resources, and deploy. Uh, yeah, so but, this, but yes. before the election, only INEC sees the ballot paper. Only so, it's only INEC staff who can compromise that process. Yes, you know, you know print, printing a document, um, the society has gone digital, and printing a, a, a document takes less than a, a, a day or two. And we have to truck these documents, these uh, ballot papers, back to the country, then put them in the central bank, then deploy them to the local governments, deploy them to our super racks before we deploy them to the, uh, to the pulling units. And this sometimes takes 48 hours. And in 48 hours, anybody who wants to print anything uh, can print it. That is why we customize the ballot papers uh, to local government areas so that you cannot use the ballot paper meant for one local government in another, in another, in another local government. So that is one of the issues. The second issue relates to uh, our position vis-a-vis -vis, uh, our ad hoc staff. These are not permanent members of the commission. We only harvest them for the elections and then pay them allowances. For instance, we have problem with section 68 of the Electoral Act, uh, which says that the declaration and return made by a coalition stroke returning officer in an election cannot be overturned except by a court of law. The implication is that we get a, a, a professor from a, a tertiary institution to come and serve as an ad hoc staff, and the commission does not have any form of control whatsoever on what that hoc staff has done. So what, one of the things we are proposing is that when a returning officer makes a return, and that return is not voluntary, or he, has, he or she has made a return that is in complete breach of the, of the law, complete breach of our regulations and our guidelines, that the commission should have the right to review such a return within a reasonable time. That's one of the uh, uh, measures we are putting in place uh, to safeguard the integrity of the electoral process and prevent a situation where an ad hoc staff compromises and the commission is completely helpless in doing anything about it. Mm. Now, I'm still talking about your staff. Um, to onlookers, it would appear that uh, INEC staff are actually endangered. Um, 
Is there any consideration uh, in the new reforms you all are thinking of to protect your staff against unscrupulous politicians? You know, the whole idea about conduct of election is a multi-stakeholder venture. It's a shared responsibility. The Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the Electoral Act has given us the power and the mandate uh, to conduct elections. While the issue of maintaining law and order and protecting the electoral environment mm -hmm. and making the electoral environment conducive for uh, voters mm -hmm. is completely outside the purview of the commission. Yeah. So what we have done was to establish what we call an interagency consultative committee on election security made up of most of the security uh, agencies. agencies for us to constantly meet and look at ways and means of having better deployment and better protection for election materials yeah. and, election, um, and, and election workers. Yeah. But I can tell you that so many of the ad hoc staff we deploy face unimaginable danger. Some of them are killed, uh, some of them are maimed, uh, some of them are, are, are kidnapped, uh, and some of them face all manners of torture. In fact, we had a situation where some of them were al almost left on the high seas you know, you know, because of the conduct of elections. So we are saying that we are approaching a situation where the leadership of the National Youth Service Corps we refuse to release core members for use in, in any election. <laughs> we also had a situation where we uh, uh, trained almost 500 um, uh, uh, professors and, um, and senior lecturers from a federal tertiary institution who are going to serve as collation officers and returning officers. And uh, half of them, after training, declined because of what they call the volatile nature of the state we are supposed to deploy them to. So we are getting to a situation, unless something is done, where we are going to have difficulty uh, getting people to serve as ad hoc staff for the conduct of elections in Nigeria. OK, we will take a moment. There are quite a number of things we're going to look at, besides yes. the 34 reforms INEC has proposed, right. hoping that the National Assembly will look at them and pass them very expeditiously. There are also things about um, that the printing of the ballot boxes, the registration papers. and deregistration uh, ballot papers, registration <laughs> and deregistration of political parties, yes. and all of that. But all of this won't come back from the break. Just stay with us. Year in, year out, time and time again, Nigeria's election problems persist as though there are no solutions. This is a bone of contention, the Nigerian Electoral Act, which many have criticized as defective. The electoral umpire is at the center of it all. The top brass of INEC are in Lagos for a retreat, and their mission is simple. The amendment not signed by President Hamadou Buhari before the 2019 elections has been modified, and INEC is making its own input. The Senate committee specifically requested the commission's input into areas that will strengthen the proposed legislation. That is the opening session of the week-long retreat. And we got more questions to ask the INEC chairman. First, on the major areas of concern, dealing with bad behaviors at elections. One of the key components of the reform we'd like to see in place is effective sanctions for those who violate the laws of this country. Any country that does not penalize offenders is doomed and we must find a way of penalizing electoral offenders so that impunity can at best be reduced um, or even be eliminated completely. And also in the light of experience arising from the 2019 general elections, we have made extensive comments far beyond what the, general, uh, what the National Assembly has presented to the Commission. So it's a mixture of what was presented earlier with new experience arising from the 2019 general elections. But how soon will this amendment come? We hope this time around, before we go into major elections, we'll have the Electoral Offences Commission and Tribunal to which all violators of our electoral laws will be subjected, whether they are officials of the commission, politicians, or those acting on behalf of some political actors. Yet again, one can say that effectively the journey to reviewing and getting a revised electoral law has begun. And the top officials of INEC are brainstorming in getting a law that will make our elections better. Shion Wakimale, 
Channels Television News. Thank you for staying with us. We still have the INEC commissioner here in the studio and we're looking at the electoral reforms. INEC has proposed about 34 reforms to the National Assembly, hoping that NAS would look at them and buy them and then cause the reforms to take effect almost immediately. But there are a lot of people who are already sending, sending in messages asking the National Assembly to look into that. But Mr. Kwe, um, the laws that set up INEC are quite robust. But apparently, INEC is not carrying its full weight or its full capacity based on the laws that set it up. True or false? Oh, no, I, I think that um, we try as much as possible to operate within the confines and ambit of the constitutional provision setting up INEC and all the laws uh, relating to our procedures and our processes. Um, we have not, never gone overboard uh, we try to remain within the, the purview of the law uh, because um, since we are a, a, a body set up constitutionally, we are also required uh, to uh, obey the constitution and have some level of fidelity maybe to the Maybe is that a trying, the operational phrase they're being okay. trying to, maybe is that trying to stay within the ambit of the, of the laws that set you of that yes. the problem? Because um, recently, INEC deregistered some political parties. Yes. Is that part of the reforms you're, you're putting out there? Yes. Okay, so INEC deregistered some political parties based on certain criteria that INEC had put out and yes. based on the law as well, yes. based on the constitution, right? Yes. Now, those uh, parties went to court demanding that they be restored. And yes. the court yes. granted yes. their wish, even though INEC said they will appeal that. But how is that working out? Because it's the second time this is happening. Yes. So how would that work out? What's the proposal now? You know, you know uh, the National Assembly uh, forced... Uh, amended the Electoral Act and imputed the registration of political parties within the Act. Some political parties um, that were deregistered went to court saying that the Electoral Act is inferior to the Constitution and that the constitutional creation and registered in accordance with the Constitution and an inferior law cannot add to or amend or be used to truncate the provisions of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. and, the, and the court agreed with them. Now, what happened subsequently was that the National Assembly on their own decided to more or less transfer those provisions from the Electoral Act to the Constitution. And that's why we have Section uh, 225A of the Constitution now dealing with the issue of um, uh, the registration of uh, uh, political parties. Now, that particular provision is very robust and very clear. There are three distinct provisions in, that, in Section 225A of the Constitution. He says, one, that any political party that has been duly registered and breaches any, any of the conditions for its registration can be deregistered. In other words... Can be deregistered by who? By because the commission. I, I, I know that this, this last time, they said yes. the commission did not have the power to, dere to deregister no, them. The, the constitution is clear. The constitution clearly and unambiguously gave the commission the power to register any political party mm -hmm. that breaches any of the conditions for its registration. And part of that condition is that you must continue at all times to maintain a registered physical and verifiable office, office in the federal capital territory. So the moment we go to where you said is your office and we now find out that it's a business center or we find out that you are no longer there, you are a candidate for the registration. If the membership of your National Executive Committee falls below two-thirds of all the states of the Federation, you are a candidate for the registration. So that one is completely different. Or if you also refuse to present yourself for verification, mm -hmm. and we'll come for verification, and we find out that you are on the wrong because you no longer maintain an office, or you no longer have physical structures, you are a candidate for the registration. The Constitution also says that you, as a political party, you must sponsor candidates for election and that you must win a certain threshold in a presidential election or in a governorship election, or you must win a, at least a, a member, you must um, win at least a seat in the National Assembly or mm. in the State Assembly and so on. Mm. If you don't win, we deregister you. So the 74 political parties 
we deregistered are the 74 political parties that failed to meet all these constitutional thresholds. And we, as a regulator, as an electoral management body, mm. are constitutionally empowered to deregister political parties that don't meet that particular threshold. And that is exactly what we have done. But the court says that you can't do that. No, no court, no court as of today, no court as of today has said the commission cannot do that. And you see what some of the political parties... So what, uh, did, what did that court really uh, say? I'll tell you, I'll mm. tell you. What they tried to do was to preempt the commission. The matter that this uh, political parties filed, they filed it in April 2019. The moment we started, we wrote to them that we are coming for verification. They anticipated that we were setting in motion the process of the registration. And they rushed to court to go and ask the court to interpret whether the commission has the power to, uh, uh, um, uh, to deregister them under Section 225A. They also went to court to say that they cannot be registered because the 2019 general elections um, was not free and fair, and that it, if it was free and fair, that they would have won seats in the election. But some of them didn't even field candidates. That is the point. You didn't field candidates, you are busy running up and down, trying to look for somebody else to support. Mm. When you apply for registration on the basis of the fact that you are going to sponsor candidates. So that's part of the issue. So they went to court to go and preempt pre the, uh, pre the, um, the, the commission from carrying out its constitutionally uh, 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 assigned mandate. But, and we said, no, you can't but do that. Okay, talking about breaching of um, mandates or breaching of laws that set you up, mm. shouldn't the commission also be sanctioned? I mean, when was the last time the commission audited any political party and published that? Because, hold on, the, the law amongst the functions of INEC says here that I went for the annual examination and auditing of the funds and accounts of political parties and publish a report on such examination and audit for public information. Yes, that's exactly what we do. They, when they, last was that done? In fact, in fact, we have just completed the last one. But you so, haven't published it yet. No, we, we, what we do is that when we complete, one, we forward to, to the National Assembly, mm -hmm. uh, and then we, sometimes we publish on our website. But you see, sometimes you go to these political parties, you want to, you know, they say, oh, please give us more time, we are not ready. Give us more time, we are not ready. And we don't just want to breathe down their neck as if, um, uh, uh, just because we're a regulator. Mm. So sometimes we give them a room, we give them some window mm. for them to tidy up their processes and their, pro and their procedures. Okay. But we have a very robust way of auditing uh, the account of political parties and making sure that they do what is right. Mm. Is there any political party who didn't have anything to be audited, for instance? Uh, because some of these small ones that you deregistered, yes. one would assume that they would not have all the documentation that you require to have your job done. Some of them resisted verification. So <laughs> there was nothing for us to audit. <laughs> audit, audit. Uh, some of them, we went and found out that the, their registered office has been, is now a business center and they are nowhere to be found. They are, for us, there was nothing to, 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 to audit. Mm. So that's part of the challenge, um, challenge we have. And we believe in the commission, we don't have any issue with multi-party democracy. And we believe that Nigeria and Nigerians have accepted multi-party democracy. And that's what, why we are saying section 221 to 22, going forward, gives the commission, gives any political association that meets the threshold the permission mm. to come and apply for registration. Mm. And the moment you meet that particular threshold, we register you. But part of the reform uh, we, are embedding, uh, we have embedded in the Electoral Act is that some of the political parties complained that they didn't have time to settle down, they didn't have time to put uh, structures in place, and they didn't have time to campaign for election. So we are now saying, if you want to, as a political association, you want to come in, you must apply 12 months before a general election. Hmm. Okay, so you don't but, have that excuse anymore. Yes, you don't have that excuse so, anymore. Okay, there's, there's really no time, so, but we, have, we need to ask you this question. Yes. The, um, the last, the two governorship elections that were overturned by the Supreme Court. Yes. Um, particularly by ELSA <laughs> elections. For yes. Instance, the question of documentation um, of the former deputy governor-elect yes. that, um, that was removed. How much of verification does INEC do to, uh, to in, this, in this area? Because part of your job includes monitoring of party primaries. Yes. 
but you also do screening of the candidates that they send in, don't you? No. It, let, let us put this in, in context. Section 187 says that the governorship candidate and the deputy governorship candidate are one. The CMS twins, they cannot be separated. They win together. They die together. They fall together. They enter the ocean together. And that nobody can separate them before election. Because whatever applies to the governor applies to the deputy governor. Mm -hmm. So nobody can escape. Yeah. They are bound together by faith. Secondly, the law says that the moment a political party has nominated these candidates, that our obligation as an electoral management body is to publish that information mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In, in, um, in the constituency where the candidate intends to mm -hmm. contest. And mm -hmm. that any person who has any information relating to the documents submitted or to the affidavit can go to court seeking for a court order disqualifying the candidate from contesting the election. That's and that's exactly to, what, that's, that what was done. And that is where we have to leave it because we've run completely out of time. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. Festus Okoye, National Commissioner and Chairman of Information and Voter Education Committee. Thank you very much for coming to enlighten us this morning. Thank you for having me. Sunrise will return with another interesting conversation in just a moment. Do join us.